I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Keycode Media's Broadcast to Post. Many of you watching today have post-production shops of your own. We call these workshops. You produce content in your workshops. Sometimes it's creative editorial, telling the story. Sometimes it's finishing in color, getting the polish on your diamond. But the common thing found in every workshop, no matter what it makes, are toolboxes. Toolboxes in our world are made by folks like Apple, HP, Dell, and Supermicro. And each of them have a slew of different tools inside of them. It's very few jobs that just need a single screwdriver to get the work done. The toolboxes we all have contain software tools. Some tools are great for creative, some are great for finishing. The tool that lets you color grade most efficiently may not be the best tool for a creative group putting the pieces of the story together quickly and without codec concerns. And the tool that works best collaboratively may not have the right pieces to kick out the new types of finishing deliverables that your new content stakeholders in OTT are asking you for. Two of these common tools are, in alphabetical order, Adobe Premiere and DaVinci's Resolve from Blackmagic Design. What we want to explore today is just how these play nice in the same workshop. How you hand workflow back and forth most efficiently between the tools in the toolbox and how this makes your workshop much more productive. Our workshops also need highly organized space to keep everything while it's being worked on. This is shared storage to keep everything flowing. Today, Steve McKenna from Studio Network Solutions will be going over an entire workflow that can work in your workshop. Multiple tools from the toolbox all tied together in a highly organized flow, basically from glass to glass. So starting with Ingest, editing with Premiere, organizing with Share Browser, then the details of the round trip between Premiere and Resolve, working on ultra-fast storage for the color and finishing process. We'll be talking about creative tools, spinning disks, SSD drives, finishing tools, and how it all works in your workshop. The tools, the toolboxes, and the workshops, well, these aren't fictional concepts. They're all available and being used by production facilities today. And when configured correctly by a systems integrator like Keycode Media, it can be a beautiful, simple, and fluid thing. On that note, let's get things started. During the presentation, I'd like to encourage our audience to ask questions on Twitter using the hashtag DaVinciRoundTrip or comment on the live Facebook or YouTube feeds. Steve, this workshop floor is yours. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Thanks to Keycode Media for putting this together. My name is Steve McKenna with Studio Network Solutions. And today, we're going to cover a better way to share projects and media assets between Adobe's Premiere Pro and Blackmagic's DaVinci Resolve. We'll cover round-trip workflows, allowing editors, colorists, and directors to more seamlessly work together leveraging shared storage, media management, and automation. Everything we're going to demo today is taking place on Evo, a purpose-built shared storage server that includes a powerful suite of tools to help content creators collaborate, store, share, and organize their media. Instead of copying files to your desktop from a direct attached single user RAID or digging through a drawer full of USB sticks, Evo puts all of your media and projects in a centralized location so multiple users can work on the same files in real time. Let's jump into it. This is Share Browser, built-in media management software included with every Evo system in unlimited fashion. This lets everyone on our team tag footage, add comments, preview clips, and search across all of the storage available to us. Now, I'm going to start ingesting some media, and then we'll start organizing our clips and bringing them into Premiere. So I've got one of those direct attached drives plugged into my workstation now, and as you can see, it appears in Share Browser alongside all of my other Evo storage volumes and my cloud workspaces like Dropbox and Amazon. I can preview clips, add tags, and even add notes that can be used for editorial. So now we need to get these files into a shared space. I'll just select them in the share browser, hit copy, then move over to my project folder and use the paste and verify command in the contextual menu. This is going to run a checksum against the original file and make sure everything shows up the way it's supposed to. If you've ever just copied files over from a hard drive and it ends up with weird artifacts or audio issues, this feature makes sure that that never happens again. 
For those of you dealing with a lot of media coming in and out and a lot of projects going on simultaneously, or if you've ever had to stop editing while files are being copied onto a drive or a shared system, Share Browser provides a unique solution. By using the file handling tab in our preferences panel, we can actually control the balance between read and write bandwidth. By moving the slider left and right, I can decide how much bandwidth will be used for the copy while still protecting the bandwidth to my workstation to stream media in real time. No more waiting for file copies, just keep editing. So now that my files are transferred into the shared projects folder on the Evo, everyone on the team can see them and start working on them. As we mentioned earlier, Share Browser is designed not just to centralize the assets, but to help teams find their media with intuitive metadata tagging and search tools. So to make sure these files are easy to find later or for anyone else on the team, I'm gonna add a few tags to the project folder. First, we'll enter our tag and then select the recursive checkbox next to the tags field. This is going to make sure my tags are applied to every file in this project folder, PDFs, audio files, media, you name it. That way, when we need to find any of these assets later, we can just search by the project name or job ID. So from here, I can right click a clip or a selection of clips and choose to export them directly into a Premiere or Resolve project. This will allow my production application to import those clips along with all the Share Browser metadata. But before we do that, let's take a look at some other Share Browser features. Different members of our team may have different needs out of their asset management system. With that in mind, we can leverage Share Browser through a simple web interface. This allows anyone to log in and tag clips, review rough cuts or final edits, and organize files into bins so they're easy to use as groups later. You don't even need to install anything. You just type in the IP address of the Evo and get started. As we'll see, the Share Browser web app works a lot like the desktop app. You can search, you can preview clips, you can add tags and comments to all of your media. And you can even organize files across multiple workspaces into a shared bin that can be browsed through or sent to other people on your team for review. I'm going to select all the clips and audio files for this project and add them to a bin. One thing that's very important to understand is that Share Browser metadata is universal. It follows your media throughout the entire production pipeline, even after you send a project to archive. So it's never locked away inside of a specific production application. This allows us to use metadata across all of our production applications instead of just one specific piece. So, our footage is ingested, we've got our tags and comments, now let's head into Premiere. Now, to get our organized content into this Adobe project, rather than digging through a bunch of folders in the media browser, we're just going to use the Share Browser extension, which is available for free on the Adobe Exchange. All right, now that I have my panel open, I can use it to browse my storage, find and preview clips, and even create and import Share Browser bins and metadata without ever having to leave Premiere Pro. This panel extension is also included for After Effects, but we'll save that for another webinar. As I mentioned earlier, Share Browser metadata is universal and can be exchanged with our production application. The tags and comments from the Share Browser become descriptions and log notes inside of Premiere, so we can use them to reference throughout a cut or create search bins to automatically group clips by the metadata from Share Browser. This makes it easy to identify shots or group our music and sound effects files. Cue the editing montage. All right, we've got our edit. Now we have to get it over to the colorist at the Resolve workstation. Without shared storage like the Evo, we would have to create our XML or EDL copy all of our raw footage to an external drive, copy it back to the workstation, and load it into Resolve, then repeat. This would take a lot of time. With Evo, all we need to do is export a single file. At this point, to make everyone's life a little easier, we're gonna duplicate the sequence and name it for color so that we can prep or make changes without losing any of our work. Now, we'll remove audio tracks, flatten the sequence, and remove any attributes like effects from my clips. This is important because most attributes do not transfer from Premiere to Resolve. Let's go ahead and export the XML file from Premiere and we'll just save this into our project folder on the Evo. Now that the file's on the Evo, any Resolve user can grab it and get to work. Let's move over to color. Now that we've got Resolve open, 
we can open our project database. Notice that this lives on the Evo shared storage as well. By having the project database in a shared space, we can take full advantage of Resolve's powerful collaborative workflow, which is especially great for those editors out there because multiple users can collaborate inside the same project using centrally stored media and share browser metadata. So now we're going to import our XML. Once we've done that, you can see that all of our footage in the media pool and our timeline is imported just as it appears in Premiere. Resolve is going to automatically link to the source footage that lives on the Evo. Normally, I'd just slap an orange and teal LUT on this and call it a day. But let's give this a shot. Whew, our grade is finally finished. Let's get this ready to hand back to Premiere. So let's head over to the Delivery tab, then choose Premiere XML and put it in the same project folder located on our Evo so it's easy to find and immediately accessible for the other users on the network. Now there's just one more step to save a lot of headaches down the road. We're going to add frame handles. This adds a few extra seconds of footage to both sides of your clip in case we need to make some changes later on. Now let's head back over to Premiere. So let's start by creating a new bin called Color Grade. We'll go ahead and select that and go to File, Import, Select XML File. Once the XML is imported, you'll see I have all of the colored clips and a new sequence that matches my Premiere timeline. So we'll open this sequence and copy it over to our original edit. Now we can use our original edit to get our titles and replace any transitions that are missing in our graded footage. And there you have it, a full Premiere to resolve round trip workflow without ever having to duplicate a single file. So far, this has been a pretty straightforward workflow, but things can get a little more complex when we start to deal with BPX or EXR sequences. Traditionally, these workflows have been handled in one of two ways for the colorist, either downloading files directly to the workstation and leveraging direct attached storage for its speed, requiring us to push the files back up when we're finished, or by using complex SAN systems that take the management of our production and post-production network out of our hands and into the realm of IT we have a simpler approach. With Evo, we can actually have different drive types across different chassis, specializing them for their use, or even mixed drives in the same chassis. This allows us to leverage high performance SSDs for image sequences and high bandwidth jobs like color grading or finishing using high bandwidth connections to the workstation like 25, 50, or 100 gigabit ethernet, while also leveraging lower cost, higher density spinning disks for more traditional edits like HD and compressed 4K over one gig or 10 gig ethernet. If you're getting footage from clients over Aspera or Signiant, we can also set up automations to move those files to the appropriate storage layer, leveraging Evo's Slingshot automation engine. Evo comes equipped with a RESTful API. Now for those of you familiar with API work, you usually have to deal with a complex Swagger document and JSON scripting. To be honest, this makes absolutely no sense to me. So I'm going to pop over to the user interface inside of the admin portal. So while I don't know how to write a JSON script, I certainly know how to click a button. And so here, we can leverage slingshot automations within an easy to use interface that allows me to simply select and create rules for file movement, backup, ingest, whatever the case may be. We'll take a look at some of the options here. So here, this is going to be an AWS backup. I'm simply defining a watch folder, so anything that goes into the media share in the footage folder. The Evo is going to go ahead and check for me every one minute for new files or changes to existing files. And I can define specific file extensions or simply say star to use all files that go into that folder. Let's go to the bottom of the page and start adding tasks. So now that we know that Evo is going to act on every file in the footage folder, let's go ahead and tell it what to do. In this particular case, we'd like to back up to the cloud. So let's go ahead and copy. We'll just select a cloud service, enter your cloud credentials. And most important, we can limit the amount of speed used while these file copies take place. Again, and always, protecting bandwidth for streaming video users within the creative department. While this automation is being used for backup, there's a myriad of different things we can do. We can add transcode tasks. We can automatically delete scratch renders based on their folder location. 
We can move files off to a more secure place. We can choose to move or replace existing files, all within this easy to use interface. So now we've seen how Slingshot allows us to take files living on the Evo and send them somewhere else or transcode them for delivery. But maybe we want to act on other storage within our network to set up some rules-based auto tiering, site-to-site -site replication across multiple offices, or even build our own cloud. If we scroll down, we can come to the replication jobs section of the Slingshot interface and simply create a new job. This allows us to take any file living on the Evo server, any other storage on our network through SMB, or any cloud service like Amazon S3 and do something to it. That may be move it off to a slower tier of disk based on its age. So in this case, from the Evo, anything more than a thousand days old, off to Amazon. Or allows us to simply replicate files between multiple offices over a point-to-point -point VPN connection or through the cloud. So from this Evo to another Evo in another city. So that now all of our editors across multiple offices have access to the same high-res content and can search within the share browser as the metadata will move with the files. We can also schedule these file moves to happen at different hours of the day, non-working hours, to protect that bandwidth for those streaming clients. It's important to note that we can stack up multiple automations on the same folder or multiple tasks within the same automation. To that point, we can also deal with our automations on a more ad hoc basis. Everything we've looked at so far involves using watch folders. So anyone putting any file into a folder has permission to run that automation. We may not want that. And that's where we can leverage Slingshot's alias ability. This allows us to create job-specific automations for use within the contextual menu of the desktop application. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now in our contextual menu under Slingshot. So rather than having to act on every file in a folder, I can simply act ad hoc on individual files as they become ready for pertinent parts of the process. As I right click, we see the Slingshot menu appear, and I now have a choice to send the file to Aspera, to my producer, or to S3 Backup, directly from the desktop interface. By using the Slingshot buttons, there's actually two other benefits that aren't as readily apparent. Normally, if I were to drag and drop, even from one share to another, on the Evo, my workstation would be used because my local operating system, whether that be the Mac Finder or Windows Explorer, has initiated that copy. So even though I'm moving files within the same server, they've had to leave the server, come through my workstation, and back to a different workspace. By using the right-click Send To button, we leverage the high-speed backplane of the server itself or the backbone of our network to send files directly from the server to their location. The other thing that's nice if you have freelancers or project workers is this allows me to send a file to a place that I don't have permission to see. So rather than having to grant write access to my network, which also comes along with delete access, just because someone needs to deliver a file, I can simply give them a button and allow them to send a file to a separate workspace or location on my network that they don't necessarily have access to. The Evo server will have access, but it allows us to create an extra layer of security for that content for future film, unreleased commercials, large corporate work that we might not want everyone to be able to grab and delete. Thanks again for joining us today, everyone. As you can see, it's very easy to collaborate between any production application that you might be using, as long as you have the right technology behind it. And that's where our friends at Keycode Media come in to keep you a step ahead. We have a fantastic sale going on through the end of the year as well. For more details, check it out at studionetworksolutions.com. And thanks for attending, and please stick around for the Q&A that will be starting here in just a minute. Thanks, and I look forward to taking your questions in just a second.